What's up everybody? Welcome to Glass Can Bottle Beer Reviews. What we got this afternoon, we're coming at you at, and I, you know, let me tell you a story. I'm trying to do it quick, I'm trying to make these things quicker. Red Hook Brewing Company, I think it's out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, this is going to slow it down. No, it's out of Woodenville, Washington, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Portland, Oregon. I don't know where it's from. I know it's up there somewhere. Anyway, I hadn't bought their, like, the Red Hook, you know, um, IPA. It's, like, the cheap thing you can buy around here. On, probably around where you're at, too, a 12-pack. If you want to buy something cheap and just change it up. I, I didn't want to. I wanted to buy some shelf crap, you know. Uh, I'm not saying crap. You know, just good price point stuff you can crush. And um, I want to switch it up from Sierra Nevada. I used to like the Samuel Adams variety pack and now they got some jacked up variety pack that mango infused bill <laughs> whatever so I, I looked at some red hook well i picked the variety pack up and they've got this bi-coastal ipa in it so i was pretty um interested in this at 7.1 percent it says red hook limited releases feature the brightest new and experimental beers Bicoastal IPA is the first of these limited edition beers, a mashup between a hazy New England IPA and a tropical West Coast IPA. Bicoastal IPA glows with juicy pineapple and passion fruit hop flavors and a dank dry hopped aroma. I couldn't go wrong with that. And it's cool can art too, the octopus. Um, let's see what this thing's about. I already drank a, the Red Hook Pale. I meant the yeah, the Red Hook Pale Ale and then the Long Hammer IPA. I mean, it's not bad, you know. Not bad at all. We're going to try this thing out. Oh, a lot of metallics from the ca from the cap. Must overflow these pretty hard. Definitely malty. Um, got a little bit of Maybe some orange in there. See the color? I'm already telling you, I don't know if I'm being impressed with this thing. I mean, it's got too much sweet birdie malt going on. It's going to probably make me sick of my stomach, I can tell. Um, it does have some pineapple and some orange. I mean, it's definitely cloudy. A lot, a lot of floaties going around for sure. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, just too much Brady malt for me. Uh, the dankness isn't there. No dankness, really. I mean, we'll wait till it warms up, see if we get some dankness. Maybe there's a little bit of dankness. I'm getting on the back end here. Yeah, a little bit of dankness. I mean, I'll compare the birdie maltness to like a uh, Sierra Nevada tor torpedo, but with more maltness with a little bit less um, bitterness. I mean, it's not a bad beer. I mean, it's just a little bit too sweet to drink a bunch of these. Not bad, though. I mean, it's got a lot of nice pineapple, tropical fruit flavors going on. It's actually getting a little bit better. I mean, it's just the, the malty sweetness is getting me. Not bad, though. I mean, take like a... Uh, uh, let me think. Take like a uh, mad fat fluid... From is that other half? Yeah, I think it's from other half. Um, it's up there somewhere. But anyway, take something like that, and then instead of the nice crisp, juicy fruit of it, add in maltness. So you still taste that good stuff, but it just it, fin it has more of a malt, breaded backbone to it. It's 
still a decent beer though. Um, I mean, it's, for Red Hook, I, I, mean, I think they, they're on the right track for sure. I'm going uh, nine flat on this one. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, I can I can tell they've got the flavor that they need. They just gotta get more of that hop flavor and, and lose a little bit of that. Maybe even if they need to drop it down to six point five, you know, maybe that will help get the malt and bready sweetness out of it. But nine flat, pretty cool. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.